News for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, musers? This is John with Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And happy new year! Um, it is going to be 2018 in a few hours here on my end, depending on where you are or what part of the world you're in, you might already be in the new year. Um, but I do have quite a few New Year's resolutions, and this is going to be a very big year for Muse for You. Some of the new changes you'll see this year uh, there's going to be a new uh, account system. So if you're a subscriber, um, there's going to be a totally new setup. Um, I am working on a new site. I'm not going to talk too much about it because I do want it to be a surprise, but there is a lot going on right now for me for you. And I'm really excited for this new year and to share all of these new ideas and new projects I've been working on. One of the new things that I'll be doing this year is a weekly update. So every Sunday I'll be posting a video uh, with all the work that I've done for the week. So you'll know uh, what widgets have been updated, uh, if there's any new widgets, and uh, kind of showcasing the new widget really quickly and, and the new updates. Uh, so I'm just gonna put everything in one video. There, there will be a few other videos during the week, like the GSAP series. I am having a lot of fun with that. And I think it's a really powerful widget, the Muse Motion widget, uh, as it allows you to create really interesting animations and effects and different kind of UI interactions uh, with little animations and things like that. Uh, so this is the first video for the weekly update. Um, it's not quite 2018 yet, but it will be. So this is kind of a precursor to 2018 and for what's to come in the new year. Uh, so weekly update number one, uh, we have three things that we're gonna go over in this video tutorial. Uh, we're gonna go over the rotating border hoverbox widget, which was released uh, this week. It might have been released uh, last Saturday, but I'm going to include it with this week. Uh, we have the anchor point scrolling update, and we have the scroll to top widget update as well. So I'll go ahead and go over the rotating border hover box widget. Uh, so here's the widget. Here's the preview page. And if you hover over these icons, um, they just have a really nice rotating effect. Um, there's a lot you can do with this widget, and you can choose from over 600 font awesome icons. Um, this widget can be accessed at museforyoushop.com and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any, any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Uh, so you click on the pop-up and then you can click on subscribe now. And the rotating border hover box widget is right here. Here are the features included, a few of the widget options, and the community section if you had any questions about the widget. Uh, this video will be right up uh, right here above the community section and the preview page that I just showcased. So I'll quickly show how to use the widget. So when you first download the widget, whether you purchase individually or download from the subscription, you'll get a zip file. And uh, all you need to do is unzip the zip file and then double click on the .mulip file and it will install directly into the library panel. So here I'll go to the library panel here to the right. Um, and if you don't see the library panel, you can go to window and click on library. And I'll go here and here into the library panel, I'll type in rotating and here we have the rotating border hover box widget. So here all I have to do is click hold and drag, place into Adobe Muse and here we have the widget options. So with each new rotating border hover box, you do want to change the instance number. Uh, for this one, I'm going to leave it at one because it's the only one on the page at the moment. Um, here you'll set the width and height of the, the rotating border hover box. Uh, because it does need to be a perfect circle, um, we're setting the width and height within the widget options. So if I wanted it to be a bit larger, I could say 200 pixels. So then it, it would be 200 pixels in width and height. And if I preview, it already has a rotation to it. So as you can see, as I rotate, it uh, rotates the border. So I'll go back into the widget options. Here you can en enable a link or open the link, or if the enable link is checked, you can open the link in a new page. Um, so right now I'm not gonna link it, so I'm not gonna check enable link, but let's work with the effect and the different styling options. So you can change the background color within the circle. So I'm just gonna add a few colors from my CC libraries. So I have these colors here, and let me just select a few. I'll just add all of these right here. Right click, add to swatches, and now we have a few colors to play with. So if you wanted a background color for 
the uh, rotating border, you could just set any color, and we'd have a background color to the um, to the widget there. So if I hover, we can see we have that color there. Okay, so for now I'm gonna remove the background color. I can say transparent as well. So I, I'll just say transparent so there's no color behind it. The effect hover speed, if you wanted it to be faster or slower, you could set it here. Here I have it in seconds. Um, the border initial color, here you can change the color of the border and the border hover color. So once it rotates, what color you want that border to be. So there I've changed it and you have a few different options for the border. Um, the dashed and dotted, you'll have to be kind of um, kind of careful with these because the border does get cut off. So when it rotates, it's not fully dashed or fully dotted. But solid, double, groove, ridge, inset, and outset look really good. So I could do double and there we have a double border. And when I preview, I hover and we have that nice rotation. And because I set it to one second, it takes one second for it to rotate. All right, so let's go into the border width. I could set the border width to thicker. So here I'll say 50 pixels. And now we have this really thick uh, border to the rotating border hover box. So I'll rotate and that's a pretty cool effect there. I kind of like that. I'm gonna make it a little bit quicker. So I'll change the speed to 0.45 and there we go. So that's basically it for the styling and uh, effect options. So there I made it a bit quicker when I hover over, we have that rotating border. All right, so let's go to the icon. So the icon, this is where you'll enter the icon name and the icon size. So I'm gonna make this icon a little bit bigger so it fits more within this larger container here and we can see the icons bigger. And if I did want to change the, the icon, I'll just click on this Font Awesome Icons link and it takes me to the Font Awesome Icons uh, website. And here I can just click on any any uh, icon, so I'll click on this bolt, and you can just copy and paste the FA-bolt, that's the name of the icon, go back into the widget, go into icon, and just paste that right in there. And just like that, we've changed the icon. You can change the colors for the icon, so here I can you know, change it to any color, and then I can change the hover color as well. And just like that, we have the rotating border, so there, the, uh, the border changes color and the icon. Looks good. All right, so then we just have the linking section right down here. Um, so linking more info. To link to internal pages, it's dot backslash the page name dot HTML. So for example, if the page name is about us, the link would be dot backslash about us dot HTML. The home page is always dot backslash index dot HTML. Linking to internal pages is HTTP or HTTPS colon backslash backslash and then your URL. And then the anchor points is just the, um, the hashtag and the name of the anchor. Uh, so that's basically it. You do want to um, change the instance number if you did have different styling for each of the icons. So here I'll, I'll change it to two. If it has the same styling, you don't need to, uh, but just make sure if they do have the same instance number, that enable link is enabled or disabled. You don't wanna have the same instance number and then have one with the link enabled and one without it because then it would disable the link for both of them. Um, if you did want varying links enabled or disabled, just make sure each rotating border hover box has a unique instance number. Um, so here I can you know, change it to anything I'd like. I can change the colors and it will do something like this and like this and just basically you know, work with the the icons and the styling of the rotating border. Um, so here I'll just pick another icon. Let's do this user circle O and I'll copy this right in here. Go back into the widget and into the icon and just paste that in the icon section. Okay, and we're gonna have to make it a little bit bigger or let's make the icon smaller actually to like 40 pixels. So it fits nicely in there and we'll change the border from double to solid. All right, and that border is kind of thick so I'll change the border width to 30. And that's a bit better. And here I'll just change it to 200 by 200. And it, what I could do is just you know resize the widget container so that it fits within the container as well. Um, so I don't have that extra space there. So one thing with these widgets, they're not responsive and within height um, because you don't really need to make these that large. So if you did want it for mobile, you could just create a breakpoint 
and just rearrange the icons here or the rotating border hover box because uh, they're not that big to begin with unless you wanted it to be really big um, if you did want it to be you know huge you could just have different um, instances on different breakpoints uh, to make them bigger or smaller so there we go and rotate and just like that we have the rotating border hover box okay so that's the first thing uh, for the weekly update now the next thing I'll go over is the anchor point scrolling update um, so that's been updated let's go to the change log and I'll showcase what's been updated so if we go to museforyoushop.com and we go to the widgets page I'll just type in, type in anchor point scrolling widget so in the change log, uh, the, the issue with the easing options not working if there were other widgets placed within the page has been fixed and there's updated code. Uh, so the, the, um, the anchor point scrolling widget, um, it's a really great widget. I'll just create a few rectangles and I might fast forward, but I'll just create a few rectangles um, just to showcase the widget. It's a lot of fun as you can change you know, the easing to anchor points and I'll just change the color there and there and we'll add this one as well and we'll do something like like that okay all right so we have four different uh rectangles and we'll just add some anchor points so here i'll go to the anchor point section click one two three four because i want four anchor points i'll place the first one at the top call it anchor one this one i'll call anchor two and anchor three and anchor four i usually like to place my anchor points all the way to the left so the site doesn't scroll sideways sometimes that happens if the anchor points are in the middle so i selected them all and for the x-axis i'll just change it to zero okay so now i'll just bring in a menu so i'll go to object insert widget menu and i'll bring in a horizontal menu and I'll place it at the top and we'll say manual yeah manual because we want to link them to anchor points I'm not going to really style this menu because um, it'll take a moment so we'll say anchor one anchor two anchor three and anchor four and I'll link these to the different anchors so in the hyperlink section I'll say anchor one anchor two anchor three and anchor four okay so they're linked if i go ahead and preview in muse it'll scroll to those different anchors and let me pin this to the top with the pin option so that menu stays there so i'll preview click and it goes to those different sections looks good so it has a nice smooth scrolling but with the anchor point scrolling widget you can add some animation to the scrolling okay so here i'll go to the library panel and I'll type in anchor point scrolling and here we have the anchor point scrolling widget so it's now anchor point scrolling widget 1.2 so here I'll click hold and drag place into Adobe Muse and here for the scroll to easing I'll just pick a fun easing so we'll say ease uh, ease out elastic and let's see how that looks so I'll go ahead and preview and I'll click on anchor two and we have some animation to the anchor point scrolling. I can set the speed of the anchor point scrolling just like that and looks good. So one thing uh, prior to the update, um, if you did have other widgets placed within the site, um, it would affect the anchor point scrolling. So that has been fixed. So for instance, if I brought in the SVG draw widget and I'll bring in yeah, SVG draw. I'll bring in the add first and we'll just bring in the SVG draw widget and I'll go ahead and add an SVG and there we go we have a bird so I'll go ahead and preview and there we have the SVG draw and the anchor point scrolling is all good okay let me just make that a little bit quicker uh, we'll say one second and you can scroll to offset from anchor so you can say offset before or after um, to go a little bit before or after the anchor point and I'll just change it one more time and looks good okay perfect 
All right, so there we have it. Uh, we have other widgets placed and the anchor point scrolling is all good. So the same with the scroll to top widget um, here. So if we go back into the weekly update, the last one is scroll to top update. So let's go ahead and add the scroll to top widget. So I'm in the library panel and it's now scroll to top widget 1.2. So here I'll click, hold and drag, place into Muse and I'll just add a few icons. So I'll add the back to top or let's do uh, this image here and we'll do this image here. Okay, so they're just arrows I've added here. I can place this to the left. And another new update with this widget is uh, with the scrolling that you can set up scroll to top offset so it doesn't go all the way right to the top. If you wanted it to go, I don't know, two, 200 pixels after the top, you would enter 200 and it would land 200 pixels after the top of the page. Okay, and you can also set the easing. Um, so same thing. So if I say, you know, ease out elastic, it'll it'll um, scroll with that elastic easing. So I'll preview. I scroll down the page. There we have the back to top button, and we have that elastic scrolling. So as you can see, it doesn't scroll all the way to the top because I set a 200 pixel offset from the top of the page. So just in case you wanted it to scroll um, a certain distance from the top, you could set that in the scroll to top offset. I'll set it back to zero. And just like that, if I scroll down, click, it goes to the top. All right, that easing is a little bit obnoxious, so I'm going to just do a nice ease out quint here. And I'll preview, and I'll make the scroll to top button a little bit bigger. So I'll say 100 by 100, and that should do it. So I'll preview, and I'll scroll down, and that's really big, but it scrolls back to the top, nice and easy. Okay, so that's it for the weekly update. Uh, we've gone over everything. So we have the rotating border hover box widget, the anchor point scroll wid widget update, and the scroll to top widget update. Um, so both of these had the same situation that if you had multiple widgets on the page, it would affect the anchor point scrolling widget and the scroll to top widget. So these two have been updated. They're now version 1.2. Um, so you can download it either from the shop. Um, if you did download individually or purchase individually, you can download from the email that was first sent. Um, if you click on the download link, it'll download the latest update. Um, or if you purchased a subscription, the update is in the subscription. Okay, and the rotating border hover box widget is also in the subscription and at museforyoushop.com. So I'll go ahead and go to museforyoushop.com. And here you can click subscribe today. And here you can click subscribe now to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. The rotating border hover box widget is right here. Here's the preview page. Here you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any, any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Here are the features included, a few of the widget options, and this video will be right up here as well. And the community section if you had any questions about the widget. All right, and then we have the scroll to top, which is uh, here. We have the scroll to top widget and the anchor point scrolling widget as well, which is right here. Okay, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. Uh, this is gonna be a big year for Muse for You uh, 2018. I'm really excited uh, to share these new projects I'm working with. And just as a little hint, uh, templates are coming soon. Um, I was gonna wait kind of to do a video on that, but just as a precursor of some of the things I'm working on, there, there are gonna be templates. Uh, for Muse for You, I did do a, a poll recently in YouTube uh, asking if you know if you wanted templates in Muse for You, and I got a really positive response. Um, so that's coming very soon, and I'm really excited about that. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video tutorial. Um, yeah, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also, in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to MuseForYouShop.com. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you. News for you, awesome websites without code.